Even if we want to go down this CPU or central processing unit, it can be also also kind of <coughs> subdivided into into parts, different parts. For example, if we open up our our computing box like a desktop or laptop, we'll find various components in it, like a network interface card. This is specialized to uh, communicate over over network. GPU, graphics processing unit, which basically process your graphics data. Uh, IO card, they are main functionality is to uh, provide communication method methods with the outside devices like uh, in many input devices, external memories, output devices. Those they take part in those 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 area of operation. There are memory interface card where through which you can you can plug in various solid state devices, memory devices like SD card, XD card, and all this stuff. Uh, there are onboard memories like they're uh, commonly known as the RAM card or memory card. Uh, they provide uh, some sort of uh, temporary memory to the computing system. And there is processor. This is like a I would say this is a generic, generic processor or general purpose processor. We'll study more around this part in this in this uh, in this whole course. Okay, so this is generic processor, general purpose processor, which is not specialized in doing any anything like network interface card is specialized in network communication. This processor is not specialized in that sense. But with this, its generic functionality, it can actually perform any of these specialized components function. Okay, so in in fact, in 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 old days, computers didn't have all these specialized uh, uh, many many specialized subsystems like a GPU. They don't have it. All the functionality of the GPU was uh, carried out by the general process purpose, purpose general purpose processor uh, network interface if computing system doesn't have it this general purpose processor can actually perform the network interface uh, network interface way right uh, but having a special purpose hardware gives it a speed benefit speed advantage it can it can be faster compared to a generic processor for example doing a graphics processing that can be slower uh, but generic processor in a true sense is a really generic processor so everything else other than this specialized uh, processing system generic processor takes care of rest of the world okay so that's inside the computing system. If we open up a CPU central processing unit or, 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 or the central box or whatever you want to call, if you open that up, you will find this component and subsystem inside it. And they are communicate with the external world through ports. Okay, we call it a port. So they are means through which data is exchanged between between a processor, uh, between a central processing unit and the external devices. For example, there are input ports through which input devices communicate to the central processing unit. There are output ports through which central processing unit communicate to the output devices. So these communication are unidirectional, right? So input device can communicate to the CPU, not the other way and output device is communicated by the CPU, not the other way. Yeah. And <clears throat> but there are bidirectional also, like for example, external memory devices like your um, hard drive system, whether it is a rotating device or a solid state memory device. They are bidirectional, means CPU can send some data to store or retrieve the data back as it wants to process some some information <coughs> in general and it's worth mentioning a special type of port called USB ports uh, these are universal synchronous bus 
ports. Uh, there are many revision of this specific type interfaces. There is USB, USB 2.0, USB-C, which is the latest one. Uh, they are very high speed. The beauty of the USB port is that it is not limited to some specific device. Like for example, input ports are there to host connection to the input devices only. You cannot just plug in an output device there. Memory ID ports is basically to host a connection to the external memory devices. But USB port is a generic one. There is no specific device. There can be an USB keyboard. That means you are using this USB port as an input port. There can be USB monitor. You can plug in a USB monitor to the USB port and that port is will be acting as an output port. And there can be an USB drive driver device which you can just plug in and that just suddenly become the USB port, become a bi-directional port. So this is <coughs> this is a very um, very uh, good and strong technology around this USB uh, techniques and that actually uh, helped uh, this computing and computing system to attach more and more devices to it without changing much to the CPU. Okay, CPU can provide like maybe two, three, four USB port. And then you can actually attach many, many devices into that CPU. Uh, so, you know, there is there available in the market. There is a USB extender where you can actually put that extender device. You can plug into one USB port of the CPU and then it suddenly become like eight, eight USB port on that USB extender devices. So, and you can, you can plug in another extender on on this first level of extender and you can like uh, increase your number of usb port as much you want to okay so anyway so uh, we won't be anyway concentrating on this usb port uh, discussion and stuff like that these are more computer engineering study area we'll be focusing on this processor okay and see how a processor works what it can do and how to how to program a processor how to write a program to be run on the processor directly without using any high level language we can directly program the processor okay we'll see that now this is if you look at this diagram this is very neat and clean with some defined you know like uh, subsystem like nic gpu all these things and this very looks very clean right but in the real world it is not this it is kind of look a little bit scary like it's like this like if you open a board a cpu a box computing box you will find all these uh, like different electronic components there of course um, all of them can be mapped in one of these this component right this is like this is a green big things is a motherboard and uh, maybe this is an this isn't uh, your um, socket 775 connector which is basically to host your uh, processor you can plug in your your center um, your general general purpose processor in that uh, there is a slot for the uh, DDR2 RAM, memory card, and so on and so forth. So you can actually pick up one of these uh, these components, electronic chip, and can map into this nice little picture there. Okay, but this is the real world. Computer engineering uh, uh, students handle this day to day. Luckily, we don't need to. Okay, we will be living in the conceptual world. Okay. But always remember, this is not the real picture. Real picture is this. This is your computing system. And we are trying to see how can we program directly this type of computing system. Now, what mentioning here, uh, this is a comparison of motherboard of a desktop versus motherboard of a smartphone, which basically looks much cleaner. What happens here 
is that many many components of a desktop are now kind of pushed into single chip okay so you will see much less number of chips in the motherboard but inside these chips all of the component we mentioned in the in the earlier slide are there basically okay so what what happens instead of having separate components on the motherboard as in the desktop in the in the cell phone these components are put into a single chip okay and that's called system on chip or soc technology okay the entire entire system is put into one single single chip microchip okay so that's that's what made your smartphone motherboard so simplistic small and you can have a small device there but in reality conception wise even this guy and this guy both contain this type of components inside it.